I'm Mark Golub, and in the news, a new survey of Jewish public opinion conducted by the AJC, the American Jewish Committee, on a whole range of social issues and the way in which American Jews feel about Orthodox Jewish control of Jewish life in Israel. The survey was conducted in August 2016 uh, and is based on telephone interviews with about a thousand Jews over the age of 18. And one of the findings to receive some real attention was that the AJC poll showed the level of support in the Jewish community for the various presidential candidates. The poll shows that while Jews favor Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump, the level of support for Hillary Clinton is significantly lower than the Democratic support has been in the past. Usually, Jewish voters vote 70% Democratic. But the AJC survey of opinion shows that only 61% of American Jews now favor Mrs. Clinton, while 19% support Donald Trump, and that he's especially strong in the Orthodox community. Libertarian Party candidate Gary Johnson and Green Party candidate Jill Stein share 9%. And 8% of Jewish voters, 8%, say they will not vote at all. Well, to reflect on the AJC survey, I'm most pleased to have on our JBS phones once again one of the most eloquent and courageous voices on the world Jewish scene today, an individual I have enormous uh, affection for, the CEO of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris. David, thank you so much for joining us again. Mark, it's always a pleasure. By the way, David, JBS is now also on DirecTV, and it's wonderful that you can be a premier guest on In the News now that we're reaching millions more people, a million more American homes. So thank you very much for making yourself available to me. I'm happy to do it. So, David, what do you make of the fact that Hillary Clinton um, right now only has 61% of support in the Jewish community? Does it mean anything to you at all? Well, uh, every poll, Mark, is, uh, you know, is a picture of a moment in time. And what, what I think we're seeing is, on the one hand, uh, the traditional strong support for the Democratic candidate among Jewish voters. The, the ratio here is just over three to one, uh, Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. So that's the good news for the Democrats. Right. Uh, but the, 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 the news that requires more work and attention is the fact that the enthusiasm level may be a little lower than in previous elections. And if mm -hmm. this is going to be a close election, especially in some key states like Florida, uh, then both parties are going to have to work hard to you know, focus on that that vote that's now going either to the Libertarian or the Green Party candidates or that 8% that's saying today we're not going to vote. So we, they got about six, seven weeks left to go, and that's going to be the target, I think. Absolutely. By the way, our viewers should understand neither David nor I would feel it appropriate to indicate any preference of one candidate to another. Our job is to simply analyze and present our analysis to you. David, your survey showed that those polled thought Hillary would do a much better job on U.S.-Israeli relations in terms of dealing with Iran, and that Mrs. Clinton would be far better than Donald Trump on handling terrorism. So in some ways, it's surprising she has only 61 percent of Jewish support, while at the same time, Donald Trump seems to be doing very well in the Orthodox community. Do you have any thoughts on any of that? Yes, well, first of all, Mark, uh to give your viewers uh, some more data, uh, when it comes to which of the two major candidates for president would be more likely to unite the country, the ratio is actually five to one in favor of Hillary Clinton among Jewish voters. When it comes to who's more likely to promote the U.S.-Israeli relationship, uh, it's a split of 57 percent in favor of Mrs. Clinton and 22 percent in favor of Donald Trump. So it's about two and a half times. Um, and when it comes to who's going to be better at dealing with Iran, uh, the ratio is about three to one in favor of Mrs. Clinton. So clearly, um, on just about every one of the indices, that margin of 
two and a half, three, three and a half uh, uh, is, is holding constant. But the other interesting finding in this survey, and, and you referenced it, Mark, is that among self-identified Orthodox voters, the number shifts rather significantly. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump will find much more support among American Orthodox Jews than non-Orthodox Jews. And this is a pattern we've been seeing for some time. In a way, in previous elections, there's almost been a mirror image. If, for argument's sake, 70% of American Jews voted for the Democratic candidate, then you can bet that close to 70% of the Orthodox Jews voted for the opposite candidate. And why? Why do you think it is there is this, as you say, mirror image? Well, first of all, in terms of of, of predicting, uh, from all of the of what they call the subgroup data, age, gender, education, and so forth, it seems that the single best predictor of how someone's going to vote is actually going to be their religious denomination. So, in other words, if someone says, "I'm I'm Orthodox," and of course we don't have a we, we don't analyze what that means. If, if people say it, we accept it. Exactly. They were reform, and we accept it. Exactly. Uh, but so they're self-identified. Then you can pretty much predict their responses to almost every question in the survey with, with a considerable degree of accuracy. Uh, what's the explanation for it? Well, I I, I think um, there's been a growing shift among religious voters, frankly, among all faiths, over a number of years toward the Republican Party, and for uh, Orthodox Jews, for whom Israel is a particularly important issue, and we see that in other parts of the data. It's a more important issue than for other American Jews. And those Orthodox voters have concluded that the Republican Party uh, appears to be better for them on U.S.-Israel relations than the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Although it's interesting in your poll most of the, the respondents overwhelmingly said they thought that Hillary, Hillary Clinton right. would do a better job than Donald Trump. I found that almost anachronistic there. It's true. It's true. Um, but this is the data, and we can only drill it down so far before exactly. we enter the realm of not of analysis but speculation. Exactly right. And I don't think it's fair to share speculation with your viewers. <laughs> fair enough. Okay, David, the AJC survey also dealt with anti-Semitism. And one of the serious concerns in the Jewish community today has to do with the BDS movement, which seeks to delegitimize Israel through economic and cultural boycotts, divestments, and sanctions. How do you assess the threat of BDS today, David, especially as it appears on major college campuses? Well, first of all, um, the survey shows that about three-fourths of American Jews consider anti-Semitism in the United States today either to be a very serious problem or somewhat of a problem. And there was a separate uh, question uh, about the campuses, um, which suggests that uh, 57% think that it's a serious or somewhat of a problem on the campuses. I think it's largely around the BDS issue, uh, Mark, although we did not specifically ask about it. I would say there's, there's good news and there's concerning news. The good news is that until now, despite all the noise, all the bullying, all the intimidation, all the threats, the BDS movement has very little to show for its efforts, very little. If the goal is to try and force universities or force state pension funds or others to change their policy toward Israel, you can give them an F. They failed. The concerning news is that they also are taking a longer-term approach. Mm-hmm. By being on campuses, by reaching young people, they're hoping to plant seeds um, for later years. So one of, one of the big battlegrounds on campus is not just about today's policy. It's really about the hearts and minds of young people today who will be tomorrow's leaders. Mm-hmm. And that's where Friends of Israel have a major challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at your poll right now, and... I don't see in my in the summary it doesn't give me numbers. I was surprised a little bit that a majority of American Jews feel that anti-Semitism in general is a problem. I have not seen it, experienced it, nor has anybody talked to me personally, David, 
about experiencing anti-Semitism in America. What's your sense of the reality here? Whether people, you know, whether the respondents feel that there is anti-Semitism or not. As you look at the American scene today, do you worry that there is any serious anti-Semitism in America? Uh, first of all, Mark, uh, AJC has been doing these surveys for many, many, many years, and we've always been struck by the fact that even in a decade like the 90s, which, as we look back, was a particularly good decade for everyone, um, there was this, people were reluctant to say there's no anti-Semitism. It was almost as if there's something in your Jewish genetic code which may modulate it and say it's not a serious problem, but there's somewhat of a problem, but very few Jews are going to say no anti-Semitism. It, 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 it's just not in our makeup. So it's always been there. Why might it be a, a more acute feeling today? Well, it may be because, first of all, there's a sense that global anti-Semitism is yes. increasing. Yes. And, 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 and for that, look no further than President Obama, who himself referred to, I think he called it the rising tide of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. uh, then you see what's going on in important parts of Europe. Uh, then you see the march of radical Islam. Then you see the BDS movement. Um, then you see uh, crazy things both on the far left and on the extreme right in this country, including some things that have come out during the election cycle. And I think people are saying, you know what, uh, I've always thought there must be some anti-Semitism out there, but if anything, I'm more worried today than I was 10 years ago, because things just seem to be going in that direction. And so when the question comes up, you know, I'm not going to say there's no anti-Semitism, because that would be counterintuitive and counterfactual. Uh, you know, I'm only saying to you, I have not seen it. I haven't experienced it. I haven't spoken to any Jew who complains to me that they have seen it. I think when you talk about this almost genetically now, the Jew worries about, at all times, anti-Semitism and the fact that anti-Semitism's head could rise at any time. And I think you make an excellent point that Jews in America, even if they're not experiencing anti-Semitism, feel such a kinship to Jews all over the world. When we see what's happening in Europe, in Paris, in, throughout Eastern Europe and Western Europe, Jews have a sense of unease. At the same time, I'm saying to you again, my instinct is that no one in your family, not you, not your wife, not your children, has experienced anti-Semitism in, in recent years. Is that a fair thing for me to say to you? Well, let me depersonalize it <laughs> and not make it about my family alone because it's also potentially true that some of us are living in a bit of a bubble, especially depending on where we live, where we work, and how we conduct our lives. But um, AJC is quite active on campuses. And when you start to speak to students on campuses and ask them, have you experienced any, any anti-Semitism from our, um, from our um, uh, data, the answer is more today than five or ten years ago. Yes, that is more of a sense. Yes. So then, Mark, you take those, those many examples, and then it, the parents know about it. The yes. grandparents know yes. about it. The friends know about it. So whether they themselves have experienced the same thing that the student has on campus or not, the fact of the matter is that the word is out, that there's something going on out there. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, about a year and a half ago, a high school student and his mom came to see us here at AJC in New York and said, there's a problem in my high school. And as a Jew, for the first time in my life, and this is New York, which was considered a very safe space, I, I'm worried and I don't know what to do about it. And I've come with my mother to suggest to AJC that you begin a high school program to prepare students for how to deal with potential both anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, not just in college where we're heading, but even possibly in high school. Amazing. And we launched that program last year. Mm -hmm. um, it was a heck of a program. It's now expanded to a couple of other cities. 
Uh, we're starting the new program in, in, in New York for a new group of students uh, uh, in, in just a few days' time. So these students are telling us something is changing. Yes. I understand And we're that. taking it seriously. We're not, we, we don't want to exaggerate it. Mm -hmm. um, the sky is not falling, mm -hmm. but we're taking it seriously, Mark, because they're telling us something has happened in the classroom, in the locker room, um, wherever. Something is changing. Very interesting. I appreciate the way you describe it. Incidentally, again, we are now being seen in every state of the Union and in Puerto Rico. I would be very interested to hear what Jews outside of New York, sometimes the, the New York to Washington corridor, the eastern seaboard, thinks that all of Jewish life is like New York and Boston and Philadelphia. And the reality is that there is a very different kind of Jewish life throughout the country. So you've heard what David Harris has to say. I'd love anybody to give us some feedback, and I'll share it with David as well. Have you experienced anti-Semitism, whether it's in New York or anywhere across the country? You also made an interesting reference, David. You said that students are complaining that they must deal with anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. There are many people who feel that the, uh, the BDS movement and the criticism of Israel is often veiled anti-Semitism. What's your feeling about that? To, to what extent when you hear people criticize Israel, do you feel that the criticism goes beyond Israel, that it really is in some way anti-Semitism, which means it's against the Jews? Mark, I, I, you know, AJC tries to be a very level-headed organization. Um, we don't shout fire. We don't use the word anti-Semitism loosely. Uh, we don't accuse people uh, that we don't like of being anti-Semitic simply because we don't like them or necessarily agree with them. But the fact of the matter is that um, while there's lots of criticism of Israel by Israelis, by Jews, uh, just visit the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, and, and watch the debate, and pick up the Israeli uh, media, even in English, and you'll see the, the debate. There are times, there's no question about it, Mark, when this goes much, much deeper. Mm -hmm. And when the issue becomes not a specific Israeli policy, but rather whether, in fact, the Jews have a right to a state of their own. Yes. And I will add, that there is no such question asked about anyone else on the planet. Mm -hmm. So when Israel is singled out by itself, alone, as the only majority Jewish state, and among all the nations of the world, this country is challenged for its very right to exist, Mark, I have to ask, what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's, about, if it's about national pedigree, if it's about national birthright, Shall I go down the list of countries in the world and what their, what their birthright is or is not? Mm -hmm. by, 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 by that comparison, Israel's birthright is rock solid. I mean, there are many countries in the world. I could begin right here in North America where, where people from other countries came. Um, they came with good intentions, but they decimated local populations and they established control. Uh, Israel... Uh, is a very different story, as we know, because it began thousands of years ago, and the proof is everywhere, not just in the Bible, but in the archaeology, in, in, in so many ways of the connection between the Jews and the land of Israel. So, want to criticize Israel? By all means. Want to criticize the United States? By all means, or any other country. But when you uniquely single out the only liberal democratic country in the Middle East, whose birthright has been affirmed and reaffirmed by the League of Nations, by the United Nations, and by so many others, and say, that nation has no right to exist. Something else, I believe, is going on, and I think it's connected to the fact that it's the one and only majority Jewish state. Beautifully said. Okay, another complicated issue for you, David. How do you, or has the AJC taken any formal position on Black Lives Matter and that movement. And the Black Lives Matter movement has taken a formal organizational position in support of the Palestinians and very critical of the state of Israel, even questioning whether it should be supporting BDS 
and the delegitimization of Israel. So how does the AJC, or how do you feel about Black Lives Matter? Well, in fact, uh, uh, AJC um, issued a statement that we worked on for quite some time several weeks ago on Black Lives Matter, and it spoke about the fact that there are few organizations in this country, Mark, Jewish or non-Jewish, that have the civil rights record that AJC has had, and in our case, it goes back nearly 110 years. Absolutely. And it was affirmed by people like Martin Luther King, who, when he received our highest honor uh, in the 1960s, said that AJC, as early as 1911, 1912, and I think I'm quoting him, spoke out when few dared to speak. And if you look from there straight through, a good deal of AJC's time, attention, effort, advocacy was always, always devoted to the civil rights movement through the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, through the affirmative action debate, through the Supreme Court um, cases, the University of Michigan and others. So we're very proud of our civil rights record. We're very proud of our partnership on thousands of occasions with African Americans then and now. But the Black Lives Matter movement, as you said, has chosen to move way beyond its own agenda here, the agenda about racial justice, uh, fairness, um, uh, police uh, issues, and it's gone into overseas issues. And which ones? Yep. Once again, it's us. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's related to Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that after we issued our statement, um, our office in Washington was targeted by a demonstration, mm -hmm. uh, triggered by, by the Black Lives Matter movement and their supporters. Uh, it turned out to be much smaller than they threatened. But what they were saying was, you know, in a sense, we don't give a darn about your civil rights history. Mm -hmm. um, how dare you? Um, and the truth of the matter is that we remain profoundly committed to civil rights, um, to the unfinished business of civil rights, to uh, pluralism, unity, and coexistence in this country. But we're also committed to um, the U.S.-Israel relationship, and we're committed to, if you will, not just black lives matter, but all lives matter. And the two should be able to coexist with one another. I love the way you say it again, David. Look, it might be unfair of me, I think, to ask you to comment uh, specifically on the controversy generated by Jonathan Greenblatt, the new national director of the ADL, for his public criticism of Benjamin Netanyahu and for his participation in a number of J Street events. But I would like you to speak to the broader issue. How do you feel about leaders of major American Jewish organizations publicly criticizing Israel and suggesting that they know better than Israeli citizens which Israeli policies are morally and Jewishly right or wrong? Yeah, rather, Mark, rather than, than talk about others, let me talk about us. Fine. And how we approach this, and your viewers will, will then take it from there. Uh, and by the way, if they want to learn more about AJC and the things we're saying and, and doing, uh, please visit AJC.org and, and learn more about us. But we are an organization that, that, that believes that Israel is a mature democracy. Uh, uh, Israelis yearn for peace no less than we on the outside yearn for peace. That we who live on the outside do so by choice. Any of us today or tomorrow could, could head for an airport, uh, and if we're lucky and live in a city like New York, fly nonstop to Israel and move on the path to citizenship tomorrow mm -hmm. and become part of the... Uh, Israeli society, uh, pay taxes, vote, send our children to the military, and take responsibility for the state. And at AJC, we believe that by the fact that we have not exercised that choice, Mark, that there has to be a certain humility. Of course we care deeply about Israel, and of course there are times that we may feel disagreement. I mean, I love America. Do I agree with every decision made by every president of the United States? How could I? I love America. Do I agree with every decision made by the U.S. Congress? How could I? Do I think there are still serious blemishes and flaws in American 
Society and life? You bet. Does it diminish my love for America? No. The same with Israel. We have to have humility. We have to understand that there is a distinction between those who live in Israel and bear the direct responsibility and consequence of decision-making, and those who live outside of Israel, and much as they love Israel, do not directly bear the consequence of their decision. So when it comes to issues that affect the Jewish people broadly emanating from Israel, issues like Jewish religious equality, which we asked about in our survey, uh, issues about who is a Jew, issues about recognizing Jewish conversions or not, you bet we speak out because we believe that this is an issue affecting all Jews. When the same rabbi in New York, a modern Orthodox rabbi who has enormous respect and who I believe even <laughs> oversaw the, the conversion of Ivanka Trump, is, is told in Israel that his conversions, not of her, but in general, his conversions may no, no longer be recognized. Something is profoundly wrong, and it's not a uniquely Israel, Israeli issue. It's yes. a global Jewish issue. Okay. By the way, I believe you're talking about Avi Weiss, correct? Uh, and Haskell Lukstein. Yeah, and Haskell Lukstein. You are uh, correct. In, in, my, in that case, I was referring to Haskell. Okay. But you can also uh, include, as you said, Avi Weiss, another modern Orthodox rabbi. Exactly. So when it comes to those kinds of issues, Mark, these are global Jewish issues in which what Israel does affects each and every one of us, and, and, um, and we're not going to remain silent. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to matters of, of war, peace, and security, look, we want Israel to achieve peace. We've, we've been yearning for this for decades. We believe at the end of the day that the best way uh, to head there is to try and find the means of separation based on the principle of a two-state agreement. But are we going to second-guess every decision by the elected Israeli government? Do we know better how to achieve peace and security? Are we really the ones ready to draw the maps and to talk about what happens the day after an agreement if the West Bank becomes um, the new domain of Hamas the way Gaza did? That's why I use the word humility. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we all have views and thoughts, Mark. We, mm-hmm. we travel to Israel, we read the media, we speak to each other. We all have thoughts. Mm-hmm. Fine. But let's, let's exercise them with a certain humility and not the hubris that suggests, you know what, um, we know Israel better than Israel knows itself. Or as some people say, if your friend is drunk, stop him from driving. I don't believe Israel is drunk. I don't either. And you say, you know, I think you're fabulous, David. And you know how much I love you and what regard I hold you in. And I am thrilled every time I get to present you and your ideas on the JBS to the JBS audience. And we cover a lot of your addresses. And we recently did your address to college kids. But I just say, I hope you have a Shana Tova Mituka. You should have a happy, healthy, sweet new year, you and your family. And I hope it's one that you and I will have a chance to see each other and talk many, many times. But I thank you very much, David. And thank you, Mark. And congratulations to JBS on, on reaching now direct TV viewers. And again, for anyone interested, AJC.org is our website address. Fabulous. You be well, David. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. And again, if you don't know much about AJC, wherever you are in the country, go to the website. It's a fabulous institution, organization, and David Harris is one of the real lights of the American Jewish scene. By the way, for me, I have a right to criticize my family, but I get very angry if anybody outside my family criticizes anybody in my family. And that's, to me, what Israel feels as well in I agree with David. There should be humility within American Jewry. As always, my thanks to our director, Sloan Copeland, production coordinator, Serge Goldberg, editor, Dennis Golan, JBS's associate director, Dara Golub, and to the producer of In the News, Carol Lilienthal. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends. Thank you.